Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad, Supercoach Pro. Today we're here doing the Round 7 Supercoach Team Review. Now, before I get in, stuck into the side in particular, um, do note before we enter this, no Harley Reid stuffed me up, I feel, and the fact that Tom Stewart didn't play also hurt me bad. So points on the table left, but not due to fielding the wrong rookie. It's just due to not having Max Gorn. And today, I think, is mission Max Gorn. Um, got to get him in that side somehow, even if it does mean sidewaysing. Uh, yeah, so... I'm not going to be too down on this. I think after the stream that I did for three and a half hours, I got some general ideas there. Um, a lot of thoughts behind some players that we might delve into too, because there's a few hot topics, as you can see in my tabs above, potentially. Talking about Jake Rogers and Riley Garcia, who to go, um, doing more chat as well. And just where my team stands as a whole, um, I could do some upgrades, but I think I just need to bite the bullet, go sideways and bring in Gorn this week before... I start really getting torn apart in the rankings. So we scored two one four zero, uh, seventeen rank thousand. Sorry, seventeen k rank. Not so great, but what do you do? Um, can only improve this side or at least try. So I didn't win too many head to head leagues. Um, I've done some changes here. I'm gonna make it a quickish video because a pretty flat to be honest. So at the moment I'm looking at Sharp and Marshall to Rogers and Gorn. But we'll take a field of how my side actually fared up for the weekend. So we didn't get anything too right apart from rookie roulette. Um, she's a 108. You know, his role through the midfield and forward was a little bit annoying the last half of that game. But, yeah, look, he's fine at the moment, so nothing to talk about too much. I'm not going to sell him regardless of role changes here and there. Houston we bought in this week, Houston and Sweet, so we did something right trade-ins-wise. Uh, Houston, I went... Four, because I thought maybe against St Kilda he'd go large and it'd be a nice VC option, um, pod-wise, I suppose. And I wanted to fix that back line just to give it some security while Stewart wasn't playing. Um, I just wanted to shore up that defense. So all I need to go for now is literally one more primo, and that's probably all we grind down back. So I've got all the big dogs down back, so I'm happy with that as a as a holistic point of view. Um, it just has to work so hard for those numbers for Houston. You saw... Luke Ryan on the opposite end of that scale, just stat padding by sideways kicking and he gets a 106, but Houston does really good things and doesn't get the same outcome. So I thought he'd get a lot more for his game than what Luke Ryan did. I don't even know how he deserved the 106, but Houston and Ryan are the last two players you want to pick at that price. Like Surely they come down. I wasn't going to pay any more than 600000 for a defender. and He was the flavour of the week for me. Um against that St Kilda heavily match up with St Kilda leaking points to defenders. I thought it'd go massive and didn't pay off. 128 to Dacos, I was turned off by maybe Durham tagging him, so I didn't go down that route. Young 94, um, yeah, this sort of dogs and frow game, a lot of points to be shared between fantasy relevant players. I mean, they all rack it up a lot, so I always knew it would be a tough game. I was thinking he'd just turn up, but just missed out in the end. Um, and then the you know the 79 before that hemi awareness, awareness, you got yeah, sitting on the bench for 20 minutes last week. Maybe that's affecting him, not too sure. So, not the greatest, but maybe I should have gone yo. But what do you do? Like, it's just, some of us just dumb luck, and this week it's just one of them. Robert's 80 for anyone that traded out a couple of weeks ago, probably not the greatest move. He's going to be the best cash cow for the year and good on field scoring. He thinks 48% of the size. No people cut him off at the buy, but. Probably wasn't worth it. I mean, he's gone since then. He's gone 117 and an 80. So pretty much around that 100 mark. Three-round average of 93. Sorry, 92 and a five-round average of 93. So, yeah, hook is probably not a bad shout for the rest of the year. He's D7, uh, M9 cover, and he's your last guy to upgrade. So you don't bring him in. But, yeah, if you chopped him, you'd be spewing um, and an average of 87. So he's done a tremendous job the last couple of weeks. Man, another, like, Oh, how much money he's made in the last few weeks. Like, insane. Um, and that's because all that spike score. He's got one more big score on him and he could go for 50 easily. So he's going up. What's that? 60K. No, 80K in the last two weeks. So anyway, good player. Love the pick. And same with Cozy. Um, he got injured. So we'll take the score anyway. I'm surprised he's only on 66% of the size, to be honest. He's already made 178k, so that's a real quick cash grab. Um, 
don't worry about his score. He did get injured, so that's why that score is relevant. And then, yeah, Stewart comes back onto the field. We'll, we'll have a muck around the side. Hopefully, Hall gets back named in. He played all right in the VFL. Butters and Steele, or Butters just played quiet. Maybe with Rosie out for a week or two, Butters picks up again. He's got the showdown, so I'm sure he'll um, turn up for that. Strong 140. Uh, yeah, he just had 70 handball so many times. He had the pill with, you know, Sean Darcy being in the ruck. It really helps uh, for our midfielders. Um, so, yeah, uh, I did think it would help Strong scoring in it as this week, which is nice. Thought about the captain a little bit. I sort of went last minute, went bond instead of taking my gut instinct on took, put out a poll, and, you know, 78% of people said, to, or, yeah, to go bond in 22 to Miller. I thought maybe they're on to say, you know, he, we saw Bont go 180 a couple, um, what was it, Optus Stadium last year. So history suggested he was going to go big again. Uh, kicked three goals the week before, which is probably saying something for a 125 to get three goals. I probably should have known in hindsight that he was probably never going to kick that many um, again. So, yeah, something's off with the Bont. He plays a lot of time up forward. Um, don't know. Just don't know. Without Weber, he's just like a different beast. He, he runs to the right places, but... Man, he's good if you didn't start him. Like, you've saved yourself 100k. Steel, he's got to be injured. He's got a heavy, heavy strapped knee. And then Miller, oh man, gut instinct was right. <sighs> Should have done what I thought I was going to do on the stream the night before. Um, Just super consistent. I mean, that was his only poor game, that one. And I think this was the game where he got burnt in the fourth quarter and no one would kick it to him. But apart from that, the boy looks back to VC and C territory safely. Uh, glad I didn't pay up for him, but he looks like a good shout. Still a good price with the fixture they got going on. Um, and the other North Melbourne in two weeks, so looking forward to that. And they've got North Melbourne twice still in their fixture, Gold Coast. So, yeah, Flanders doing Flanders things. Only attended like three CBAs, halfback flame, takes kickouts. What more could you want at that price? He looks great. Um, fielded Wilson's uh, 88 there for Reed being rested, which was quite annoying because. Ah, I would have played Reed over Garcia, and it's probably fifty points lost out. And then you know you play Tom Shield over another rookie, and you've you know gained yourself an extra fifty, sixty points. Could have been at worst a two two ninety or something like that at least to get me into that top five k or thereabouts. But yeah, I'm a little bit flat as you can tell. But I mean, Will Graham eighty seven. Uh, I won rookie, rookie roulette between him and Sharp. Had a feeling that he could do better against West Coast than what Sharp would against Dogs. So rookie rule out, I've been really good. I've I've taken note of how these rookies have played. I'm I'm impressed about that. So my judgment call was right. Sweet was a no brainer to bring in. Uh, and this is the whole point of that Meek situation. Trade out Meek for Sweet, gained myself thirty points. Uh, and Meek only went up like thirteen k. Whereas Sweet, I had to go early because I wanted one of Garcia or Rogers. Uh, it was going to be Garcia, but I'm still not sure on the reverse plans. We looked at Rogers then. Uh, so he'll be R2 now. Uh, Marshall, I think we're just going to get rid of and bite the bullet. I don't tend to sideways trade too often. Well, I kind of do at the start of the season, but I'm off the Marshall train, I think, regardless of playing North Melbourne. I don't know. Maybe you guys can talk me out of it, but I've shown my trade plans behind Marshall. I mean, he went down to the rooms, was off time and ground for a bit, um, played on one leg, did all right for a guy that could have been subbed out for a zero, but... I don't know. There's so many points between him and Gorn. It's just ridiculous. And then Heaney, couple of goals. Like, can be tagged by McGuinness, but doesn't stop a great man for kicking a few snags. Just look good. Just knows how to read the crumb really well. Always in the right position, very much like Bont. Like, always front and center of that crumb pack. Um, yeah, just wow. Especially up forward. Like, he's just a different beast. Playing forward all those years, he knows how to kick one, doesn't he? So, yeah, I'll have that pick. And I'm not going to do anything fancy with Sheez or him and, uh, you know, go one primo and turn him into two with a rookie or anything absurd for me, um, tactically. Jackson 76, but he plays Tigers this weekend, so I'm optimistic he'll kick a bag. Not too worried. There's nothing else in the forward line I can go to. Uh, Powell, uh, yeah, always a bit of CBAs, um, so not too sure. With Will Phillips being dropped, hopefully his numbers might go back up. Uh, advocate for other holding or, or culling. It doesn't really matter either way. He's going to lose 20K if he scores another 70. And then Darcy, 88, fielded the right rookies here. But I guess uh, maybe I could have won another 13 points, but means nothing at this point. 61 from Combin. Uh, I think it was on like 39 or 40 at halftime. And then just 
gave away a free kick, so it could have been a 65 score. Not too worried about him. think he's still a way better pick than Biggie Newen. Newen's going to surely get dropped for Carl Dawson when he comes back. But Look, um, I think I've got two options in my trades. Garcia, I'm probably not going to get into because that just really annoyed me on the f- Thursday or Friday night, whenever that was now. Um, feels like a lifetime ago. If I optimise my side, um, I want to take, talk about a few different things, I suppose. Uh, it doesn't pick up that Stuart was, will be back this week. So I've got a couple of different routes, I suppose, when it comes to team structure. Um, which I'll have a look at. What do you do? There's two options here. I think you already saw them, really, in that reverse moment. So it is definitely Marshall is on the chopping block at some point. Um, Gorn is just so far above everybody else in terms of rough points. Like, look how much he is at the top of Marshall, regardless of that shocking score. Like, averages compared to Marshall... 99 to 136. He's given 36 points up every week, regardless of that injury. Um, his scores are insane. So, I don't know. I think for our tradition, the same boat as this as well. Like, there's a few of us that are just over this stupid going martial route. Um, and pity if you brought him in a couple of weeks ago too, because he never got his big scores. But I know they play North Melbourne, but I just think it's time to go. Like, he's just leading VC options as well. Out of my side, um, and then Sharp's the other one that could probably go. Uh, he's done his job. He's made two hundred k, so I've got the right right rookie. And then it's probably a bit of swapping around in this team that makes it a viable selection, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to remember what I did originally. So maybe move Young into the midfield. Um, Combin down back. Read up forward. Which Flanders in the midfield, Livingston here. I've done it probably all the wrong way. I know Gorn's already in there, so Livingston stays there. Flanders back in the forward line and then brings me Rogers. I don't know. I'm really torn. Maybe a Gold Coast fan, if you guys in existence, um, can tell me if you reckon Rogers have good job security in terms of not being the sub because they're using Swallow as a sub. Or Garcia, but Garcia just feels like when Sanders and Weber come back that he could be potentially a sub from what Bevo's press state conference was the other night. So it could be something like this, which doesn't get me an absolute upgrade at all, but it does give me an extra 30 points in the ruck line every week and a decent VC. Um, it just looks so much better now I'm not fielding a Garcia, so the the, ruck, the forward line looks okay. On any given week, it could be a hit and miss between three players down there at least. Um, sweet in there is fine. And then the back line, I can actually move around with Combin and Karmas. And if Hor isn't playing, I suppose I can loophole him. And then, yeah, we poll mass if I need to, too, I suppose, as well. There's so many different avenues. Um, I can leave my E on Wilson and hopefully he goes big. And if he doesn't, I can always field Roger if mass isn't named. Uh, and then I find out if mass is a sub or not, too, I suppose. So I've got a, a bit of an insurance policy by having this DPP heavy team. I've got a lot of options to do things. So I'm not too concerned. But I still wouldn't mind mass as an on field scorer. I just really need Stuart to come back and Reed to definitely come back this week or else I'm going to lose some more rankings here. I mean, there's people that faded Reed or traded Reed out a couple of weeks ago. And it hurt me this week because I fielded a 40 for him instead. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So there's there's that route. Um, and then I'll talk about Garcia and uh, Rogers in a second. But there's also option B, which means you sort of leave Marshall exposed. You can always... I don't know, make him emergency. If worst case comes, you you can put Jackson in the ruck if he gets subbed out or is it laid out or something like that. But then you could go down this route. I don't know. In the comments, let me know what you guys think. <clears throat> and again, I think I'll target Rogers at this point. Uh, the 98 will stay in his system longer than the 82 from Garcia. Um and I don't I don't need a dead rookie in the forward line if it doesn't pan out. So for now, 
I'm thinking Rogers. I think Jimmy will play the kids. But what does 535k really give me is the other thing. Does it really give me anyone <clears throat> um, that I can pick? Or is it worth just sideways and going this week and waiting for other players to come down and buy us like truck, et cetera? Uh, so it probably depends what it gives me. Um, yeah, it could get LDU. Three-round average of 97, not fantastic, though. No, of 100, not great. Still not a bad shout at that price, I suppose. But what's the three rounds look for 535? Yeah, disgusting. Don't want to go near to Um, No, I don't trust McCray. He's got a 79 without Weber there. Could go Harry McKay to fix up that forward line, I suppose. Or Jeremy Cameron. We were talking about that in the chat on the stream. I don't love it, though. Put him back down there. Don't know why Garcia's even doing there, but Garcia's coming off. How did Garcia get there? Why is Combin? Yeah, okay. Sorry, I've messed around on my side too much. Uh, let's have a look at the back line. What does 535 give me down back? Hmm. we we'll go Bailey Dale. So maybe Rogers isn't the player if I wanted to do this. Maybe I push Buku down back and grab. There's so much tinkering on my side to do that it's very frustrating because you got to look at what it does for your team as a whole. Do I play Garcia and hope he doesn't get subbed? Riley West misses a week, so maybe he doesn't get subbed. So what does it give me? It gives me 558k instead. So it's other Rogers and Gorn come in for a player at 558k. Does that give me Dawson? I really got to think about this because this is make it or break it week for me. I need to make some sort of move and it's got to be an upgrade of some sort. Is that seriously what it does? Okay, that's all right. It does. It does do Dawson. Uh, what in the back line does it do for 558? Nothing, because I want more to grind regardless, I think. So I'm sold out of any of these other guys, these value guys. I can't see myself doing anything. Ryan's a clear D1. I don't want to lose points off out of that by grabbing a discounted player. Maybe an M8. This is the last time I go cheap on an M8. Um, what do I like? Three-round average. Nothing below... LDU. Yeah, okay. All right. So maybe I'll put up a poll. Man, that's close. Massimo and Sharp for Dawson and Garcia. For Marshall. Marshall and Sharp for Rogers and Gorn. I'll put on a Twitter poll. Please tell me what you guys think in, in the... Uh, Comments below, 500 bucks is pushing it. Let's see what it looks like for my team structure, potentially. See if it looks really good, actually. It's, it's one a clear winner, but I just can't think of how it's been looking. I was trying to think about how my side looks like as a whole in the uh, live stream, but I just couldn't think about anything. I was drawing blanks for it. I mean, it means you'd have to field Darcy, Combin, or could field, yeah, Ford on looks okay. Howell on the bench is a bit of a waste. I should probably cash him out if that's the case. Mm. Oh, no, I can probably play him ahead of Garcia, but you probably prefer to... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm really stuck. You could probably field him instead and get rid of Powell at some point if you're going to do that, aren't you? Hmm. So that might be a bit of a poll for me. Do I grab Gorn or do I grab Dawson this week? I mean, it means next week I'm, I guess I'm Gorn v. Dawson and, and Marshall. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. I'll, I'll have to have a look at it because Marshall could still be a good pick, but I just need Gorn at some point, right? Am I gaining more points by grabbing Dawson? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait. I'm very unsure. Anyway, I'll go to CBAs with Hawthorne. Dylan Moore was the hot topic. 
tonight in chat. Has his CBAs gone up in round seven? It was Meek, Nash, Newcomb, Warpool, Day. Mm, Dylan Moore, no. So why is Dylan Moore scoring so well? This is Ryan Garcia. What's his stats been like? Hmm. So I asked two. So it's just been an influx of his disposal going up. Maybe I'll do an abs and I'll have a look at the heat map where he's been playing. But good shout for 460-odd K. A mm, couple bad games in there, but the last two has gone pretty hot. I don't mind it. There's just nothing in that forward line. Anyway, I might look at what happened to kick-ins for Adelaide. Did Dawson get any kick-ins? Dawson. No, nah, didn't get a kick in. Interesting. What does CBA is like for Dawson this week? Just don't know whether to go there or not. Like, I love the pick, but this is the last week you pick him. You're not going to pick him for any more than 550. 60%. So, it actually went down because of Crouch's return, clearly. Royal Ed's concerning, 57%. Anyway, now there's two players, I suppose, to the other thing. Rogers, what's his stats like? I think I already looked at this, didn't I? I mean, they're not bad. They're not bad for this year. It's going 100 in fantasy, 20 disposals. We can see, yep, 12 tackles. So he's a high tackling player, which is nice. So that would bring up his stats in Super Coach. And here again, 20 disposals. Must have used it pretty inefficiently. Maybe the tackle numbers weren't there as well. A lot of handballs. Doesn't score too bad, I suppose. Um, what else can we read about him? Mm. 170. Okay, so he's not very tall. Doesn't matter though. Small forward. Da, da, da. Maybe he's got good job security then. Maybe he's doing like a Roses role, potentially. What's he got on his draft profile? Wow, yeah, okay. Built for 170, I'll tell you that. Even though it's only 68 kilos there. Uh, pound for pound. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's fine. What's his strengths? That's what I want to find. His agility, clean hands, decision-making skills, speed, and tackling. Okay, that's not bad for a rookie. Uh, his fixture looks okay too. Improvements in endurance and size. So maybe we can have a look at time on ground with him. Is time on ground concerning for a player with his ability? Let's see his stats. The concerning thing against a good opposition like Sydney is he, um, he scored a 28, and that's concerning, really concerning, really. Um but it was his debut game. You'd be definitely nervous. You wouldn't know what the pace of the ball, like how fast teams move it in the real deal. But the 98 shows that he can play. Um, and he's only 148k. I don't know if Garcia up forward could be a dead rookie in a few weeks when I know Waitman's down. So negative break in 41. Yeah, it'd be a bit of a pod, but he'd be brought in heavily this week. You can already see that. His fixture looks all right. Brisbane, they probably do all right against Brisbane. Yeah, they're not in form. North Melbourne and Cats. Where are they playing? Oh, they didn't say in the comments and stream tonight. They were saying they play up this way. Hmm. Darwin. Anyway, fantasy stats in particular. You look at the Sydney game, no good. Seven disposals. That's definitely concerning. A free kick against. Tackled once. This game, he had, 20, he had it 22 times, three tackles, but his opposition was West Coast. Mm, he, he doesn't need to get a lot of it, though, really, for him to make money. Just don't want him to be a dead cash guy, I suppose. That's my issue. And then look in, I mean, the doggies play. At least he can find the pill. <sighs> so hard to think. I mean, Riley Garcia, if not named the sub, he plays... He plays Hawthorne, like, come on, mate. Then he plays Richmond. Hmm. Probably a better shout, isn't he? If he's not a sub, you're probably taking a punt on Garcia. I mean, what's his stats? 82 and a 64. So, had it 17 times. And, and what's his 16 touches here? Probably a bit handball friendly. Still had a lot of tackles. Can play a pressure forward role. Doggies fans in chat, let me know if you reckon he's sub material. It's certainly interesting. Um, Yeah, and then you look at Riley Garcia's profile. Like he's been in the system for a few years. He's had stints of games here and there. 
His VFL numbers don't match up. Like you can see since 2021, there's a lot of 90s in there, a lot of 80s. And then you see so this year he's gone 163, 128, 122. So it shows you can find it a lot more. But he's playing like a high half forward, a role anyway, a forward role anyway, when he comes to the actual AFL side of things. So 41, 31, 36 disposals there. Uh, player profile, so he knows the system, averaging 16 disposals. Mm. Yes, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe he's the better pick. Just don't know if he'll use him as a sub. That's my issue with Bevo. Like, but how does it look if I put him? Yeah. I don't know. I think that's a side potentially going into the round. Uh, it could be Dawson or it could be Gorn. I've got to figure it out later in the teams. Like, there's got to be some news Tuesday night about Marshall's state of injury. If there is even a slight chance he's a laid out, I'll probably just flick him. If there's not, maybe I'll just grab a Dawson, but I feel like Max Gorn is just bleeding me points. So what it feels like at this stage for my team, uh, I don't know, there's something about Dawson that I still like, but he's already played North Melbourne now. Um, so maybe I go Marshall to Gorn and then grab Garcia instead over Rogers. Either way, we've got to do something with this size. I mean, 154K. I get rid of Cadden instead. Instead of Sharp, just to get a better forward. Interesting. So this is the other thing I didn't facilitate thinking about. Getting rid of Cadman and keeping Sharp against Richmond, potentially. Grab a Garcia. But it does tie me into I won't be able to change it. If Garcia's name sub, I'm stuffed. But it means I bring in Gorn. And sure, if he's subbed in, maybe it's from an injury again. I just need, yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to know the ins and outs of the dog side and give me a good idea if he's going to be a sub or not. 8K. I suppose at worst case, I can always see who the late games are and I could always grab somebody else instead. Who's in the that game? Hmm. Bit of fluffing about in this video, but it's it's like what do you do? I'll give you a team preview, but hopefully this is not just a rage train. Hopefully this is legit. So what are we doing? So worst case scenario, if Garcia's name sub, who what options do we have to go to? It's the second or last game you don't. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there. Too much fluffing around and this. But thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for even like joining the stream. It was almost a four hour stream the other night. I'll post this. Um, you see it a day late. No point posting at midnight. Just about. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subbing. Listen to the, the the live streams on Sunday nights and the ones I do during the week. The ones that I do during the week won't get posted to YouTube, but the Sunday night ones definitely will. And yeah, just thanks for all the new subs and, and comments that keep me going. So it's been a good season so far. One bad round and it doesn't define my whole season. So I think we can go up from here. Uh, thanks for watching. Chuck any trade plans you got in below and I'll answer them. No worries at all.